Today we are out in Florida, which uh, by the background behind me, you can pretty much tell I'm in Florida. But I am here to drive an 850 horsepower Nissan Skyline GTR R32. It's a time attack car destined for Pikes Peak and it's built by a guy named Sean Bassett, who knows a thing or two about time attack. Now here's the thing though, the car has never even been raced or driven, so we get to be part of its shakedown. And if you know anything about cars from shops, it's one thing to see the car in the shop, it's a way better thing to see it out here at a racetrack. I don't want to get in it, I'm gonna love it. drive it because I'm gonna love it. I'll just stay over here. All right, so we're hearing the guys shaking down the car and it is pure euphoria listening to that thing off in the distance. Oh, here it comes. They're getting faster each round. And it's just... Yeah, it sounded it sounded all right from out, out here. It didn't, you know, it wasn't amazing or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty mellow drive, but this thing's uh, definitely she wants to be driven. Yeah. That's cool. See, smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This isn't Sean's first wild Nissan. For the last few years, he's raced an LS-powered 240Z in Time Attack competitions. Those are timed lap battles as opposed to head-to-head -head racing. He's also run at the Pikes Peak Hill Climb twice. That 240 is one of the cleanest builds you'll ever see fabricated at his shop with the same care that SpaceX puts into its rockets. That's a pretty nice tube bender right there. A lot of fabrication equipment. A 350Z. Another Z, but this looks a little bit different than that one. Just judging by the carbon fiber in the back, it is pretty obvious to me, looking at all the details in this car, including the mil-spec wiring, all the booting, that's a very expensive option to do. And you, you could just run a wire and you know use duct tape. <laughs> you can tell the person that runs this shop is a very meticulous person. And in fact, if you look at anybody's shop, it will tell a lot about their personality, whether it's their own personal car or maybe even their choice in customers and customer cars. In this case, I can see a theme going on here you got the huge front splitters, a big wing, a big wing, a big wing, a big wing. But those don't look like they're just for decoration. This looks like, with the words up there, time attack, it looks like these cars are built for a purpose. But not just all of these cars, I think it's the car right here that has me most interested. Whether you're an absolute fanboy like me, or very aware of the fanboy culture, you can't deny the place that the R32 GTR has in the automotive world, especially in the tuner world. First of all, I used to own an R32 and it didn't look anything like this. So I wanna ask you, what did you do to this car? Yeah, so this, this car is, is very special because people don't want to People look at like how do you bring them back to stock as opposed to go full race car. So uh, the customer Chris who owns a car when he was like, I want to go full race car with this thing. I was like, came to the right place, homie. The car makes about 850 horsepower. OS Geiken sequential transmission for now. Um, the stock RB26. It's actually a Stroker, so it's a 28. Okay. Uh, yeah, 2.8 liter. Um, right now we've got a twin setup on it. We're actually going to be going to a Garrett single to simplify things. Yeah, like so you it. know. Yep. Um, yeah, so motor-wise, she's good to go. It's now it's just keeping her happy and maintained. We're going to dry sump the car, but uh, we did a lot of aero work on the car, obviously. Um, yeah. And this is this is exciting to me because I can ask you in person. This arrow is effective. I know the For answer, sure, but yeah. I, want, I want you to say it, because I know front splitters, rear wings, these aren't just for street looks. These actually are functional. Uh, yeah, they are. So we took a factory-shaped front fender. We widened it just a hair. I still wanted to keep it 
clean, so you couldn't maybe really notice, but uh, we want to be able to pull that air out of the fender, all that turbulent air. So you're, wait, you're saying that you made this? Yep. You made yep. the carbon? Yep. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, we, I, well, we can go on for a long time about that, but yeah, we made the uh, front fenders and then um, a couple other little carbon parts here and there, but yeah, it's a full flat bottom car. This is going to pain me to ask this. How long did it take to do this build? Uh, so we got a really nice example of a street car not running, like I mentioned, and we knocked this out in about two to three months. I need to work on my, my build times. Yeah, we, uh, Jamie keeps us in shape, making sure that we stay on schedule. I am a huge fan of aero that is functional. And so you've got the front splitter. You know, now that we're out here, we can see all this in such bigger detail. Front splitter, flat bottom, and rear diffuser. That's like, that's like free money. That's like free horsepower. And you're really putting more grip down, or at least weighing more down on the tires. That might not always be a good thing, but I think in most cases that absolutely is. <laughs> oh, feel that, that, oh, that is a strain gauge set up right. The brakes, the steering, everything about this car is just like a dream for me. It uses the same all-wheel drive system as my car does, and so it's way better than mine right now. So I get to experience my dream of using this sort of setup. And my dream is fulfilled right now. Yeah, when I said I wanted to build a car, my wife was like, what's the one that got away from you? Oh, Skyline, I'm a kid of the 90s, right? So this was like that extreme version of a Skyline, you know, not the one that you see all the time. And I mean, you, you can't deny the sound of a straight six. Oh my God. I call him up, we start talking about what's your goals. I'm like, I wanted to be like next level. He's like, you wanted to be that GTR. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that. That's the one, not just like a GTR, that GTR. So I think that's kind of been our mantra. And looking at it, I'd say so. I'm like, if it wasn't mine, I'd be trying to buy it. This car is clearly an aerodynamic car, but it wasn't until recent, really within the last 20 years. While I was a kid, this is not, you never saw this sort of stuff. And even when I was a teenager, you saw a big wing from like Fast and Furious, but it, it was just a wing. In this case, there's balance. You know, you've got all this rear down force, right? Well then what's that gonna do? It's gonna lift the front of the car. So you have to balance it all out. And it's so neat to see that not just the professionals, but even people, and I, I'm not trying to point this car as the amateur, that's not the case here. But the idea is that I could go and make a car, you know, slap some aluminum on the flat bottom. Like there, there, it's a thing that you can research and learn. But something that says a lot to me about this car is the brakes. I cannot stand when you see a car, like I don't know, my, my own cars, where the wheel is huge and the brakes are small. It's just like, just such a nice proportion. And of course that also speaks to how functional it is. That uh, certainly will be used today. I, I, I'll tell you what, Sean, I am so impressed with your work. I'm, <laughs> I'm quitting my own car building and I'm just gonna have Sean build my cars. talk and tell you guys things about this car, but I, don't, I, I can't explain how much I just want to drive it. We're trying to live in this world where it's a streetable race car and like, you know, our fit and finish level is very high. His expectation of fit and finish is very high. So doing our thing, but like living in the boundaries of like, how do we optimize this car without just cutting it apart and not making it a GTR anymore? That's, mm -hmm. that's I think, intimidating. That's a huge challenge to be able to do that. You want to make a car yours, but you want it to do a lot of different things. Well, this, this car checks off everything off of my list. 
there's been no issues. <laughs> Not a single issue. And this is the first time it's driving. I, there's supposed to be issues. And these guys are just roll it out, no problem whatsoever, and then hand it to a guy like me? That's, that's a testament to their work. That is just impressive. Oh my god. I want one so bad! I want one so bad! This is ridiculous! Bad dumb habit. We weren't even gonna bring tools, so... We, did you bring tools? A, a little bit, but nothing... <laughs> you know the toolbox and the trailer's empty. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did it, just, uh, <laughs> it's just there for looks. Okay, baby. I'm gonna miss you. I'm in love with another man's girl. <laughs> I wanna cry, that's not fair. Even though I've got all the safeties on, oil pressure, oil temperature, on a rotary, you just have to like live by those. This, I was looking down, it didn't matter. It was running solid, I, I'm driving it what I thought was hard, car didn't care. And my God, does it stick to the ground. I felt like this, this car is just, that circle of like ability and the car's way out here. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. That's the only sign. That's the only sign. That's the only sign. <laughs> yeah, I got the sign. The sign. Yeah, I got the sign. <laughs>